to the Lone Star State. I think that's what the Texas is called, yep. isn't it? Yes, it is. First pitch to BJ Upton is in for a strike. 57 degrees is the game time temperature. Expected to be 85 Tuesday in Arlington. When we get there. And the way we're going, it'll be 85 here as well. Because <laughs> yeah, we've missed them. Yeah, we keep missing the warm weather. Upton, Crawford, and Longoria here in the first for the Rays. Hit hard. Mark Ellis on a dive. Picks it up, throws to first in time. So Mark Ellis, a nice play to start the ball game. Kind of smothered it yeah. on his dive. And that's a good idea. Mark has had some just misses so far in this young season. This one kind of hit it in the heel of the glove, but cratered it under his body and from his knees. Good stretch by Jason Giambi at first base and keeps the speedy Upton off first base. And a good way to start the game defensively for the athletics. First pitch to Carl Crawford is a swing and a miss. Rays won eight to two on Friday. A's won yesterday five to two. Garcia Parr has to throw quickly, and he does to get the speedy Crawford. Boy, well, made it look easy. A very tough play, especially when you know the speed of Carl Crawford as he slapped the ball to the left side. And he gets out of the box so quickly. No more. A little backhand. And he, of course, has a very strong shortstop arm. So at third base, is no problem for him. Slinging it across the diamond and gets the speedy up there. Uh, Crawford and Upton both had a chance to get on base. And those are two fast guys to keep off. Evan Longoria steps in. Two for seven in the series for Longoria off to a very nice start five home runs and 16 RBIs. The Rays are seven and eleven in the early going five and six on the road two and five at home. And they are right in the middle of a nine game road trip which started. In Seattle. And then three here, and they will go to Minnesota after th the game today. So quite a few road games in the early going for the Rays, and we talked about it Friday night. Ray, they are in the middle of a stretch, 40 games in 41 days. They'll be busy. I know sometimes being on the road kind of brings the team together. Of course, similar record to what they had last year when they went on to win 97 in the American League pennant. Pat Burrow and his third consecutive game is the DH for the Rays. I'm sure he enjoys the weather today. Driven to right center, Sweeney on the run, still on the run, and he's got it side retired. So nothing for the Rays in the top of the first. Bottom of the first coming up. Sweeney, Cabrera, and Giambi, no score.
first at the Coliseum. The A's and the Rays just underway. Dana Evelyn with a nice three up, three down, top of the first. Ryan Sweeney steps in against the right hander, Andy Sodenstein. Quick look at the umpires. Mark Wagner is behind the plate today, calling balls and strikes. Rob Drake at first, Tim Timmons at second, and Jeff Kellogg, the crew chief, is down at third. Jackets on, except for Mark Wagner. Maybe it's a. Uh the way they're doing yeah, it. I think it's the way they're doing it. The crew chief says no way. <laughs> Show off the guns. So 6-3, Sweeney is retired. Let's take a look at the rest of the A's lineup. It's brought to you by McDonald's. Shaw Sweeney, now it's Cabrera, and then Jason Jambi, Matt Holliday, Jack Cuss, and Nomar Garcia Parr right in the middle. Kurt Suzuki is the catcher. Travis Buck in right. Mark Ellis at second. Jason Giambi, 397 career home runs. Sometime soon, we're going to see a pretty special milestone. Cabrera takes a strike. Trying to get Orlando Cabrera going. But for some reason, yeah. Not the kind of guy you're worried a whole lot about. He is in a tough stretch right now, but he's a pretty good hitter. He will come out of it. This is what the Rays defense looks like. Crawford, Upton, Kapler in the outfield. Longoria, Bartlett, Zobris, Ibar on the infield. Navarro is the catcher. 0 2. Cabrera was 0 for 3 on Friday night and 0 for 3. Yesterday he did walk and scored a run, but he strikes out there. And that's the second out here in the bottom of the first. Well, the pitch that Andy Sonnenstein likes to use a lot, the curveball, and he has about five different pitches, cutter and slider combination. But he likes to use his off-speed pitches. Fourth start, 0-2 on, on the season. 2-2 two two career against the Athletics. He walked four in, four-plus innings. In his first start, only two in the last 11 total, so he is usually around the plate. Very rarely likes to give a fastball for a hitter to sit on and, and hit the ball. In his last start against Seattle, kind of threw so many breaking balls. The Mariners started sitting off speed stuff and started hitting. The shift as usual. Oh, and two to Jason Giambi. That one rolled foul. Sonnenstein, the pitcher for the Rays, came up halfway through the 07 season and then member of the rotation for the full season last year and did a very nice job. Won a couple of games in the postseason for the Rays. Roy Halliday, the best as far as the fewest amount of walks. Sonstein in that picture as well. Ibar has it. And a three up, three down inning for Andy Sonnenstein, just like Dana Ewan. On to the second from the Coliseum, no score.
Electronics. Your best buys are always at Fry's Guaranteed. Second inning. It's Little League Day. Don't think that youngster is quite ready for Little League just yet. Soon enough, though. So that means all these kids going back to school tomorrow will have their reusable water bottle. That's right. To make sure they're That's right. well hydrated. <laughs> And they can tell their classmates. I was down on the field. Pat Burrow leading things off for the Rays. Burrow, Ibar, and Zobrist here in the top of the second. I just found out today that Steve Finnell, of course, uh, head of the ticket department for the athletics, is coaching a team in Little League. Finelli's Phillies. Yeah, I so saw. He's a big Phillies fan. I, of course, grew up. And this guy is very familiar with Pat Burrell. Of course, many years his whole career with the Phillies. Very, very sad when Harry Callis passed away. I saw Steve Finelli's got a couple of cute little boys, yeah. about little league age, and they had the yeah. Phillies unis on Absolutely. today. Absolutely. You see them? Absolutely. <laughs> One of the members of that team is Stewie Thalblum, Mikey Thalblum's yeah. son, Stewie. So he was out parading around in the uniform. So Finelli's Phillies. <laughs> I like it. I do too. It's a great day for the Little Leaguers to be down on the field. And always a special day. Slowly hit, and that is a foul ball. Great play by Nomar. <laughs> what a great play. Well, took a, a hop, of course. He let it go as it took the bad hop. Had he put a glove on it, it would have been fair ball, but he pulled the glove back, and this is great. Matt Burrow trying to get an infield hit, but as it went down the line, watch it take the hop right there, and he just pulls away, and the ball to the left of the bag, and a foul ball. But it took the erratic hop. He was going to be able to make the play easily enough to probably get Burrow. But very smart infielder, player, no more to be able to do that. Close pitch just a bit inside, so it's three and two. Same pitch and call the ball again. So a leadoff walk to Pat Burrow. Hey, you wish it had stayed fair. So yeah. of course if Parker had thrown him out. And in the fifth position. First baseman. So first walk issued by Dana Evelyn. These pitchers have issued now with this one 13 walks in the series. So the walks have been an issue so far this season. They've issued the second most walks in the American League of A's pitchers. That's 75 now, and this is for the A's game number 17. Good news for Dana Evelyn in his previous three starts and nine walks, only one has scored. You always like to look at the the number of free passes that do come around to score. But all it does is add on to the pitch count. Hit hard but foul by Willie Ibar. Yeah, you're messing with fire in a couple different ways when you start walking people. Angels and the Mariners are underway in Anaheim. Angels with a 2 nothing lead in the third. Jared Washburn is starting that game for the Mariners. Washburn and Weaver the matchup. Washburn's been very good in the early going. Trailing 2 nothing right now. The Angels are leading the Mariners. Three and one. The Texas Rangers just lost. Baltimore eight, the Rangers five. That's a final. That is the A's next opponent. But that series is not over in Baltimore for the Rangers. They have a night game tomorrow. 
So we will we will be in Texas much, much sooner than the Rangers will be in Texas. Well, if you want to scout the Rangers and get in and watch them. That's exactly right. That's a bad schedule. Yeah, that's a night game. First of all, the wraparound, but worse than that, to play a night game on a getaway day to fly back to Texas and start the homestand. That means you probably won't see many of the Rangers out in third batting grounds. Line drive, base hit to left field by Willie Ibach. So two out and nobody out for the Rays here in the second. Running in the sixth position, second baseman, number 18. Couple of pitches down out of the strike zone and then a uh, belt high fastball, three and two. And I bar a very strong young man. The Rays still think he has been around a while. They still think he could be it. Force offensively, switch hitter. Here's another switch hitter, Ben Zobrist. All right, we talk about wraparound games a lot, and what it basically is is most series are Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Once in a while, you see a series Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Well, we call that the wraparound game, which Screws up the schedule for because yeah, Sunday's <laughs> usually a getaway day yeah. for all teams. But you usually have a couple each year, and it is very strange. But. Well, and normally, or at least in, in a lot of cases, the wraparound is because the team is playing a night game on Sunday, the network game, uh -huh. and then they stick around and play it, but not with a day game in Baltimore, and then a night game on the getaway day. Toward Mark Ellis, he's got it. Spins around. The out at second base is recorded. Now Mark Ellis very calmly took a tough ground ball, and he realized, watch as he catches the ball, 360 turn, and then realized no chance to get a double play, so he's going to make a perfect throw to Orlando Cabrera at second base to get the force on high bar. The ball took him to his left, so Mark Ellis. Instead of rushing and trying to make something happen that was not going to happen, made sure he got the one out. So Deanna Navarro hits with runners at first and third and one out. And he bunts, and it's a good one. It's going to get the run home. Giambi flips to Ellis. Ellis barehands it, steps on the bag, but Deanna Navarro. Gets the run home with what is a sacrifice and an RBI. But basically a squeeze. Safety squeeze, and Navarro did it perfectly. Got a first pitch to lay it down. Coming down the line is Burrow, and perfectly executed. That was, I would say, more of a suicide squeeze. See if you can see Burrow on the lower part of your screen coming in. And as far as he was down the line, that was not a safety squeeze. Safety would be making sure the ball is down. The girl was halfway down the line. Navarro put the ball in play, and Joe Madden said, I'm not going to have him ground into a double play to end the inning. So, squeeze on, get a run in, and it's a gift run. And if you're Navarro, it's a sacrifice. Yeah. So, you don't get in at bat, then you get an RBI. Yeah. And the leadoff walk comes around the score. Kapler. Drives one to left, but Holiday's there as he gets back, settles under it, and he's got it side retired. A run for the Rays on one hit and a walk. Bottom of the second. Coming up, one nothing Tampa Bay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time.
in the top half of this inning. So Matt Holiday leads it off for the A's in the bottom of the second. Holiday, Cust, Garcia, Parra. Matt Holiday, 238 is the average with 10 RBIs. Looking for his first hit in the series. He's 0 for 8. Well, the A's for a long time. They were not hitting home runs. Jack Cust a couple. Nomar Garcia part of the first homestand. But now Jason's hit his first. Travis Buck his first. And they'd have to think Matt Holliday's thinking even more because he is a home run hitter. So let's hope. On one hand, he gets hot, but not to the point that it's bothering him because he has not produced with the home runs. Travis Buck an outstanding day yesterday, probably. The opposite field base hit, the walk, and then the home run in order of preference, just because of staying on the ball, but able to pull it into the seats for the home run. But the opposite field base hit was an outstanding swing. Curveball on 3 1, and it snaps in for a strike. So now full count. And well, Holiday is such a terrific hitter. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, it is just a matter of time. But there's the pattern for Andy Sonstein. He likes to throw the breaking balls at fastball counts. Ooh. Just off the plate, and it's a walk. Leadoff man aboard for the A's in the second. Well, tune in tomorrow night on our sister station, Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. This is a biggie, folks. Game six, Sharks, Ducks in Anaheim. Sharks are down three games to two, so it's a do-or-die situation. By the win tomorrow night, the back of the tank, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. 7 o'clock, Sharks pregame live, and then they drop the puck at 7.30. So make sure you tune in again at Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Sharks, Ducks, that's tomorrow night. So Sharks well, stayed alive last night. Home field advantage helped the Rays win the uh, American League pennant last year. Lost a tough game. Up 7 to nothing. That's right. the deciding game. For them anyway, and Red Sox came back to beat them, but they took it back to Tampa Bay, lost game six, and then Rays won game seven. It does make a difference. Yeah, well, hockey fans will tell oh, you yeah. Shark Tank is one of the loudest buildings in the league, if not the loudest. So they can get it to game seven. Let's see what happens. There's the rundown. A couple of shutouts by the Ducks, games one and four. An overtime win with your season on the line last night. Patrick Marlowe, the winner, so it be fun tomorrow night. One and one to Jack Cust. If they don't win, we're not going to have any... Uh... Sharks broadcast up in the booth in baseball, right? No, oh, man. Randy <laughs> Hahn was fired up the day he, he was, was in here. He, he was, was ready. ready. It was the, I think it was the, the day before game one. Yeah. He got us fired up. So but we wish him the best of the luck. That's a base hit for Jack Cuss. Matt Holliday, good base runner. He'll make it to third, and the A's are in business here in the second. First and third, and nobody out. Uh, Jack Cuss with the Uppercut the top spin and Joe Madden watched the leadoff walk get to third base. Stayed on this curveball. Let's look at that uppercut and then this the top spin. Excellent base running by Matt Holiday because of the shift. Second baseman Zobras was playing a little bit deep. He was able to read it though and once he got over Zobras head in the third base easily and the A's have a chance to even it. So here's Nomar. And he lines one on the first pitch to left field, and that's a base hit. What took him so long? <laughs> Curveball, <laughs> changeup, it doesn't matter. So RBI number seven for Nomar, and he's had a couple big hits in this series. Something about walks getting on base in front of Nomar and a first pitch hitting, as he just did. Stayed on it. Sonnenstein got a little bit too much to play, and Fastball yesterday from Matt Garza cleared the bases. And a breaking pitch from Sonnenstein scores one. That was another walk. So he's driven in. His last four runs have all been guys who reach base via the walk. Take him. So 
Well, nobody out for Kurt Suzuki. Suzuki drills one to the gap, and that's going to get through and one hop the wall. One run scores. Garcia Power being waved home. The relay gets away, and that's a two run double for Kurt Suzuki. And the A's have a three to one lead. Well, the infielders were pitching in looking for a sacrifice. Second inning of the game with a couple of runners on base. Yeah, you might think about it, but Sonnenstein, fastball, and maybe, just maybe, because he thought he might be bunting, gave him a fastball to put the ball down, maybe to get it out. Instead, Kazuki able to turn on it and go no more. Ball to left center and Mike Gallego. And I think a little fortunate ball was bobbled in the outfield on the relay, allowing Garcia Parr to score easily from first base. Yes, back on top. So Kurt Suzuki, RBIs five and six on here. Travis Buck, a drag bunt, pops it foul and into the seats. A good idea to try to drag the ball to the right side to move Suzuki to third, where he would be less than two outs. But think about Sonnenstein with his pitches, breaking balls coming into the left-hander, he should naturally just be able to pull the ball. Get on top, roll over, and get the ball to the right side. But the way he played yesterday, can't fault anything he's doing today. Buck, the home run. Also walked, scored a run, drove in a run, stole the base. So it was a do it all day for Travis Buck. Before that start yesterday, the last time Travis Buck was in the starting lineup was April 15th, and that was against Boston. That was the Tim Wakefield game. So that's a long time. You got to give Travis Buck some credit. He hung in there. Yeah. Well, they got a, a bat against Mariano Rivera in New York. Though. And he appreciated that, <laughs> I'm sure. That one rolled foul. Well, Matt Garza. Travis Buck yesterday just watch this nice easy swing and go. That's how quickly it was out of the park or out of the playing field into the seats. A little tough to get one over the Mount Davis here. Two and two now. Kurt Suzuki at second. A walk, a single, a single, and a double for the A's. Here in the second inning. We talked about the breaking ball from Sonnenstein coming in to the left handed batter. However, they will try to stay away from the left hander to prevent him from pulling the ball. Big gap on the left side as a result of where Bartley is set up. Perfect. Travis Buck does his job. One out, Suzuki to third. No surprising that he got the off speed, the slow curveball. And that enabled Travis Buck to do an outstanding job. He is 0 for 1, but from the team standpoint, he gets a lot of handshakes from his teammates in the dugout for getting the job done with the infield now coming in. So Mark Ellis will try to take advantage of that infield being in. That's one hard base hit. Pass to diving Jason Bartlett. Suzuki scores and it's four to one A's RBI number nine on the year for Mark Ellis. Well, there's your infield in. Otherwise, that's a ball right to Bartlett. The Travis Buck got him over. Infield comes in and Mark Ellis like no more Garcia Parra. Got a little cut fastball and right past Bartlett as he made a diving attempt. And that's why the great game of baseball is an individual team sport. And what Travis Buck did basically is the team part. Individually, you try to get the job done, but when it comes to an opportunity to be a team player and do the job to play the game correctly, that's what he did. It's a great job, and the A's scored because of it. 
Somebody said it to me one time. It's a collection of individual acts. That's, right. That's what a baseball game yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. Jam shot to short. Bartlett yeah. has it, and that's a double play. Yeah. There's nothing Mark Ellis could do. No, Bar Bartlett short hopped it, and that made it an easy turn for the Athletics. But a good inning for the A's. They score four times on four hits. Big hit, Kurt Suzuki, Nomar Garcia Parr, each knocking in runs. On to the third, it's four to one, Oakland. Two of those runs coming home on Kurt Suzuki's double. So four to one. Danny Evelyn has a lead as he heads back to the mound here in the third. Faces Bartlett, Upton, and Crawford. Big average, 365 for Bartlett. And that includes a four-hit game on Friday night. Danny Evelyn walked the leadoff man in the second, Pat Burrell, and he scored the run. Long run for Travis Buck, still coming over, and he cannot make the catch in foul territory. Heck of an effort by Travis Buck. Got into the ball into the foul territory and kind of went in the dive with a little slide and just over ran the ball. The ball came in behind, almost hit him in the wrist. But still very difficult to go into a slide to avoid running in to the rail on the side and concentrate on the baseball. Close pitch, but a bit low. Evelyn tell right away. He's Around the plate much more in this start. He's just trying to hit the inside corner of the right handers, and so far he has been mostly down, which is a good place to miss. Not to go full count. Just as the third batter in the first nine that he has taken the count full. Top of the order. B.J. Upton waits in the on-deck circle. Payoff pitch. And it's hit hard, but foul. Well, Bartlett off to an outstanding start offensively. Watch his play. Semi-line drive, but he let the ball bounce. He could have caught the ball in the air, but he realized by letting the ball bounce, it froze Mark Ellis at first and able to throw to Zobrist and complete the double play. Mark Ellis could not take off. He'd taken off towards second. He would have caught the ball in the air, doubled him off. 
So from Ellie's standpoint, it was a no man land, no man's land, but smart play by Jason Barton. It's almost for Bartlett, whatever he does offensively is a tremendous bonus because of his ability to play a great shortstop. And he's got another base hit, fifth hit in the series for Jason Bartlett. So the Rays look up and they see a 365 batting average in. I think they're Number thrilled two. about that. They're short stuff. They thank the Minnesota Twins every day. Every day. For Matt Garza and Jason Bartlett. And that's nothing against yeah. Delvin no. Young, Absolutely. who's a pretty good player, but. What the two guys did for the Rays, especially last year and on into this year, tremendous. Said, I asked him yesterday, I mean, how many folks do you have here Friday? He said, over 100. You know, so between wow. Pattenborough, Bartlett, <laughs> there's somebody else. Uh, well, Joe Nelson. Joe Nelson, yeah. right? That's right. The tickets are being used, especially by the Rays, but that girl said he had a ton of people here, and Jason Bartlett confirmed he had just as many. Upton grounded out to second, leading off the ball game. Inside. Not so bad to have 100 people come to the game just as long as you don't have to take them out to dinner. Nope. You already got it. <laughs> Handing up for some of those <laughs> tickets. Right. Not like it used to be. No. Well, it used to be you could leave as many tickets as you wanted pretty much. Just yeah. go to your teammates and say, hey, you using your tickets? That's it. No. Just keep going around. And, and, it, it, and if it happened to be in Oakland, Bartlett, Burrow, go to guys and say, okay, we're going to my hometown or area where I grew up. I need your ticket. So they give six, which are not. Four family, two friends. And you get 10 players, you, you got your 60. Sure. No problem, no charge. That changed. So now it's just say no. <laughs> you want tickets? Uh, here's a number. Yeah. 1-800- So one and two to B.J. Upton. Upton 0 for 9 in the series so far. He has walked three times. So this would be pitch number 45. I think uh, Dana Evelyn just looked at the board just to see what you said. As he knows with three two counts and deep counts, pitch counts getting up. And I think Evelyn also knows four and two thirds innings, two starts ago, four innings in his last start. And no starting pitcher likes to get knocked out before the fifth inning. And even more so, the club just gave you a four spot, four run, second inning, take a four to one lead. That is right there. Upton took it, and that's a strikeout. First strikeout for Evelyn. And they finally got the corner. Number 13. Upton Carl shaking Crawford. his head as he goes back to dugout, but looked like that one caught the, the corner easily. If we had our. Hi, home robotic camera. We would show you exactly how the ball hit the corner. It was a strike either way. Robotic or no robotic. <laughs> Robo cam's a good one. Yep. First pitch to Carl Crawford is outside. Crawford a couple hits in the series. He's also walked a couple times. Bounces that one into right field, the base hit. And Bartlett's going to go around to third. Giambi was holding the runner, so he's playing quite a bit closer to home plate than he would be normally. And Evan Longoria jumped up, just could not quite get it. Carl Crawford with a high chop and. Bartlett realizing 
the way the ball was hit, and he was able to get to third easily. It's about as high as Jason's going to be able to get up and try to catch the high chopper. Now Longoria, who you'd like to see a ground ball to try to get a double play to get out of the inning, but he has a lot of fly balls and a lot of long fly balls. Get a fly ball to center field to end the first, and he takes a pitch down around the knees for a strike. Evan Longoria, just 23 years old. How about that? He's your rookie of the year. He's probably your best all on player, and he's also the youngest player on their active roster. Evan Longoria. Well, the fans showed exactly what they think about him by voting him in to the All Star game. We got the 9 million votes as the online voter voting for the final couple of spots. Third overall pick in the 2006 draft. Hit hard. Mark Ellis has it to Cabrera for one and a first double play. Big pitch made by Dana Evelyn and Longoria cannot get the job done. Four nothing A's. And the A's with a four to one lead over the Tampa Bay Rays in the rubber game of this series. Andy Sonnenstein gave up all four of those runs in the second inning. In the third, Cabrera, Giambi, and Holiday. Curveball, swing and a miss. 74 miles per hour. Cabrera struck out swinging in the first inning. That's the only strikeout for Sonnenstein in this game. That's a base hit to right field. Nice swing by Cabrera. Well, a great pitch thrown by Dana Evelyn with a very tough hitter at the plate and Evan Longoria. Right to Mark Ellis, the sure handed man threw to another guy at shortstop with sure hands and a 4 6 3 double play with the runners at first and third. Couldn't have hit it more perfectly, but a good backdoor breaking ball thrown by Dana Evelyn right to Mark Ellis. So Ray is not able to capitalize on a first to third situation. And the A's got out of the inning. Giambi takes down and away from Sonnenstein. Leaderboard today brought to you by Firestone. Most career home runs against the Rays. Giambi with 31. Fifth most. 
Maybe that's why Manny Ramirez wants to come back to the Cleveland Indians so he can improve with 41. Yeah. What do you think Cleveland was thinking about when Manny came out and said, I would like to finish my career in Cleveland? And oh, by the way, Jim told me, go with me. Yeah. Two of the great stars with the Indians and <laughs> two guys that could. Uh, DH. Sure. And DH. A and lot of money. <laughs> they could <can> both DH. <laughs> <Yeah>. Platoon. <laughs> Down the left field line. This was Giambi's shot yesterday. A towering home run to right field. And the location. And Shouse. Set 80 miles per hour on the board. And I asked Jason, is it change up? He said, no, just kind of a like get me over. Pitch for a strike and pitchers will do that take a lot off the velocity and Jason reacted almost hit a fastball off Matt Garza earlier. He hit so high it looked like he's going to go over the foul pole and be his first at a multi home run game but uh, just pulled it foul. So came back a little bit later against the lefty and second deck. Now that one was so high I mean you really lost it for a while. Somebody did. You didn't even really see it. Almost out of the out of the camera shot. We didn't televise, but uh, MLB TV was here. And who was doing the Marty, camera? Marty, I think Marty was Cohn was doing yeah. the camera up here. Marty just kept looking over and listening to everything, and all of a sudden, where'd it go? Where's the replay? Well, we don't know. Marty's great. Wasn't the same today. He would never miss it. Left field for Crawford, who is toward the line, and he's got it for the first down. I will say, one Jason hit. The first one, it was a good 20 feet higher than the foul. <laughs> really? I mean, moon it, shot. Was, it was a moonshot. <laughs> Not only that, but long, and same with his second deck shot. Well, I admire it, Marty, because these guys are able to follow the baseball. I don't see how they do it. I can't do I it. Mean, it's, Especially during the day. Yeah. There he is, one of the best. And we don't have a big camera to wheel around. We just use our eyes. There's a lot of talent standing next to us. The BI behind us. Very talented statistician. BI, a big Raider fan, was. Pleased with the Raiders Let's picks not this year. Talk about that. This is baseball, so don't go there. Okay. Come on. This is for the the Raider fans that are listening. <laughs> for a bluff saw first, and then goes back. Holiday swings and misses. So one and two. No, we did not show the replay of Orlando Cabrera's base hit, but that is his style of hit. Yeah. Breaking ball, hitting it to right field, two strikes. He gets in a nice groove. We're going to see a lot of that throughout the remainder of the season. That one to the backstop, and Cabrera to second. Well, I knew Delaire would make sure we got a chance to see Orlando Cabrera. Look at the slider, a little breaking ball away from. Cabrera and perfectly yeah, nice. executed going to the right side, hitting down on the ball, following it all the way into right field for a base hit. And now Cabrera at second base. Holiday hits one high to center. Upton back. And he's got it. Cabrera's going to tag and he will get to third standing up. That's the second out. A's will be away for six games, but when they return, Sunday, May the 10th, the A's will take on the Toronto Blue Jays, a very, very hot team in the Eastern Division. That's at 105 on May the 10th. There's 10,000 fans that day will receive a reusable tote bag brought to you by Aquafina and Lucky. Tickets are on sale now. Call 877-493-BALL. Hey, Ray, did you see what the official ruling was on that ball? <laughs> Pass ball. And you know what? I think it was the right call. 
I agree. Just I think like, he should have caught it. Just like Friday night should have been a pass ball, and he got away with one. Yeah. Watch this. This was a. This was. They yeah, just tried to backhand the ball. It didn't move. Now it was could have been either way. He had to backhand the ball. Did hit the ground about the same time as he tried to backhand it. That could be a wild pitch. Although if he moved his body properly, he would have caught it. Well, plus the ball. I mean, it hit the dirt, but it right. hit the dirt past his glove right. and the reason it hit the dirt is because he didn't catch it. Right. So it is a pass ball. Friday night unfortunately and. He just missed one and it was called a wild pitch. So maybe they're evening it up. That's low two and one. So you put a runner on third. And the shift becomes a little different. The third baseman really has to stay close to third because you have a runner there. Otherwise, he would be over playing what is the shortstop position. That's Ben Zobrist way out in shallow right field. Three and one now to Cust. But a great point about the A's batting order with Garcia Parra following Jack Cust, and you got it right, left, right, right, left. Right at the bottom part of the order. Omar Garcia Park can handle lefties or righties as he's already shown. Garza yesterday and Sonnenstein today. So that should help Jack Cust, who has a great eye, to maybe get a better pitch to hit than in the past couple of years. Sonnenstein on 3 1 through Cust a curveball, and then on 3 2, a fastball moving away from Cust. So the full count. A walk. So Cust is aboard for the second time. He had a single in the second inning. Now batting number one, Nomar Garcia. So here's Nomar. It's something, isn't it? Nomar's been in the league for what, 15 years, whatever the exact amount of time is. Knew early on that he likes the first pitch. Yeah. He's been doing it since day one. And he's still successful with that approach. Well, he's, a, he's really an act, a, a very disciplined hitter. He knows the strike zone so well. But he is not up there to take a lot of pitches. And yesterday, check out this fastball down and in for Matt Garza with the bases loaded. First pitch, and this ball just shot in the gap in left center. And that would clear the bases. All three on via the walk. First ready today also. Holiday had walked. He scored. Curveball stays just a bit high to even the count at one and one. Well, after a three up, three down first inning by Andy Sonnenstein, he has been in trouble the rest of the way. In fact, he's been in the stretch pretty much all of the last two innings. Walk two, he has struck out one. Popped up, and that's going to reach the seats. Angels now with a 5 0 lead over the Mariners in the fifth inning. And Howie Kendrick hit a home run in that game, so did Juan Rivera. Jared Washburn get knocked around a little bit for the first time. Just got a piece of it. And the Yankees and Red Sox needing some extra time to rest after yesterday's <laughs> game. Six to nothing. Yankees leading then lost 16 to 11. Wow. That was a wild one. 16 runs scored in the final five at bats by the Red Sox. Remember what happened Friday night. 
Strike three called, and that will do it. So the A's do not score, and they strand a pair. A couple of strikeouts in the game for Andy Sonnenstein. Four nothing A's. Omar Garcia Parra, outstanding defense at third base, and sometimes it's better not to catch the ball. This time he did with Carl Crawford, a strong throw across the diamond, and then Pat Burrow, slow hit ball, takes a bad hop instead of trying to catch it and throw out Burrow. After he took the bad hop, he decided to let it go. So he showed exactly why he's an outstanding player, both sides, defense and offense. As it turned out, Pat Burrow did walk. They end up scoring the only run for the race. And Burrow leading it off here in the top of the fourth inning. The A's with a four to one lead. Oh. Looks that's, good. That's got to be good in a couple of months when it yeah. really warms up. Yeah, I think that trail will be almost empty in a couple of months. <laughs> it looks good nonetheless. See, you put that in front of him. Six, seven, eight year old, forget it. Doesn't matter what the temperature is. 2 1 change up and a good one from Evelyn. It's 2 and 2. And we don't beg for our food. I mean, if we no. mention dibs and somebody brings some dibs to us, then that's fine. We don't mind it. I mean, the, if the cookie lady wants to bring us yeah. cookies, we're okay yeah. with that. So Pat Burrell strikes out swinging. A good pitch by Dana Evelyn to Pat Burrow. He got the fastball down on him. Maybe a little cutter and ended up getting the strikeout. Burrow swinging at the pitch out of the zone. And Todd Callis, who the son of uh, the late Harry Callis, great broadcaster of the Phillies, unfortunately passed away a week or so ago. A chance to see him and he said how great it was to go to Philadelphia and how much, well, we all know how much Harry Callis was respected and admired and loved. And, Philadelphia, great boys, the Phillies. But I thought Richie Aspern, there's so many stories that came out. Richie Aspern worked with him. And Aspern, former great player, and started playing some long games. And they had a place called Celebrity Pizza. And Aspern would say, Well, I wonder if Celebrity Pizza is still open. 15 minutes later, here comes a couple of pizzas up to the booth. So the marketing department got a little upset because they said they're not spending any money. You can't give them any publicity because they're not spending money. <laughs> so they let it go for a week or so. This thing you know is a late game. There's Todd Callis working for the Rays. A little bit of a late game a couple weeks later. They said, Harry, I think we ought to wish happy birthday to the celebrity twins. <laughs> Pepperoni and plain. <laughs> 15 minutes later, here's another pizza. There it was, and I bet one was pepperoni <laughs> and one right. was plain. Exactly. Uh, but that's you know, he's, uh, Todd's a great guy. He is. He's, it's so sad. To, 
And uh, as he said, the Phillies will be playing in Tampa, Tampa Bay, the, the way the interleague works out this year. So that would be a, a nice tribute, I'm sure, to Harry Callis as he goes down there. Mark Ellis knocks it down, picks it up, throws out in the eye bar. Well, from what we've always heard, Harry Callis and Richie Ashburn, they had a lot of fun oh, and they yeah. were quite a team. Yeah, absolutely. And good broadcast. I guess uh, Richie's called Whitey. Yeah. The white hair. Are you going to call me that now? <laughs> hey, Whitey. <laughs> yeah, no, great team. So. A great, great team. And for many years with the Phillies. Good to see Todd able to enjoy the yep. nice sunshine here this afternoon. He is pre and post on television. Of course, runs around the stands a little bit. And for a long time when he played the Rays. Wayne Stats, who's still there, TV color man, and Joe McGrain was mm -hmm. the color analyst. Joe, one of our favorites, but now Joe's with the doing a nice job with the MLB network. So Brian Anderson, yeah. uh, former pitcher, left hander. Yeah. He's doing about 40 games and uh, he's worked with the club and also Kevin Kinner. But if you needed a good chuckle, stop in the booth. <laughs> and say hi to Joe McGrain. And he would say something funny within <laughs> probably 15 seconds. He's one of a kind. Our good friend Joe McGrain. He's probably sitting in the studios back east. Waiting for us to make fun of him or something. And we're not going to do that. Joe, we're not going to do it. Dane Evelyn, a couple of strikeouts. So he's settling down. Bottom of the fourth coming up 4 one eight. Now the A's will play the Rangers starting Tuesday, but the A's will also play the Rangers here at the Coliseum when the A's return. That uh, A's take on the Rangers May 6 and 7:05. That's the next double play Wednesday. Every Wednesday home game. What are we watching there, by the way? Every Wednesday home game, you can get Plaza reserved and outfield tickets for just two dollars. Hot dogs are just one dollar, courtesy of Bart. Order online at OaklandAthletics.com or call 877-493-BALL. What is that called, Kite? Dot racing. It's, it's one of the all-time greats here at the Coliseum. So they made human dot racing. I thought it was pretty good. We just wanted to show you some of the between innings festivities. Bartlett steps up and throws, and Kurt Suzuki is retired. So live dot racing between innings. And they worked on it the other night. Big, huge costumes. They're huge. Number six. Are they better than the sausages in the? Well, the sausage Noah. thing is sort of legendary in Milwaukee.
Well, they have the. I, I, I think they have it anyways in Washington. Don't they have the former president, former president's race, something like that, where they have these big costumes, with the heads of former presidents. Travis Buck reaches out, pokes one into right field. Stay hot, Travis. That's great to see. They hit number six for the A's. Now when we get down to uh, Arlington, Texas, as you see another breaking ball hit nicely by Travis Buck to right field. But they have their dot races. Chuck Morgan, their PA announcer, does it. But then at the end, they have them come out of the left field. So we'll show that on uh, Tuesday. That's right. When we broadcast right here on Comcast Sportsnet California, Tuesday and Wednesday. First two games of the series in Arlington against the Rangers. And fasten your seatbelts because you go to Texas to play the Rangers, it would be some high school. Rangers hitting home runs again this year. Not surprised by that. Mentioned earlier, the Rangers lost eight to five today. Rangers had a five to one lead in that game with Camden Yards and then lost eight to five. You know, we are honored to have David Renetti, Vice President of Stadium Operations, standing in a booth. I don't know. He's coming up here maybe to bring us some new chairs. <laughs> Dave, I have to agree with my partner. <laughs> Since you came in, we thought we would just mention that, by the way. Well, we asked the guys <laughs> in the crew and Ray, who have been here a lot, lot longer than I have, and they said they thought that these chairs arrived in 68. <laughs> they came with the team with from the team, Kansas yeah. City. <laughs> That's when they were green, and maybe some reupholstering, uh, but. Uh, we're going to be called high maintenance, Ray, if we're not careful. No, David's a good man. He He's awesome. He handles everything in the stadium, and that's his responsibility. Chairs are part of that, too. Two and oh is the count to Mark Ellis. Trying to extend the four to one lead here in the fourth. And Ellis swings and misses on two and oh. It's always nice on Little League Day to have a good game, a very well played game, and it has been so far for mm -hmm. both clubs. I like to have a lot of little, little leaguers come out and say, I would never do that. <laughs> they want to see that crisp way. baseball. Yeah, and they have seen it so far. Buck with a pretty good lead at first. He's not going anywhere. Ellis pops it up. It's just below us. Speaking of Texas, yeah, he is. he's ready. He is ready. He's ready to watch the game Tuesday night. Ball that stays high. So now a full count. We'll see if Bob Guerin maybe starts the runner, Travis Buck. There's one out. Sonnenstein, not the, the big strikeout guy, doesn't throw real hard. Well, the important thing is contact by the hitter. Mark Ellis handles the bat very well. He's got a huge hole on the right side. So I see him just trying to go that direction and make a first and third out of it. Buck takes off, and it's a swing and a miss. Throw to second base is in time. Travis Buck can't believe it. He's holding his arms out, pleading his case to Tim Timmons, but it's a strikeout, throw him out, double play, side retired.
Kuyper. You're watching A's baseball here on Comcast Sportsnet California. A new TV home for the Athletics. Travis Buck tried to plead his case. Looks like a questionable call at second base on the stolen base attempt. But it's a 4 1 A's lead. Danny Evelyn struggled some this year in his first three starts, but he has been pretty sharp so far today. Just one walk, three strikeouts through the first four innings. And seven ground ball outs for Dana Evelyn and make it eight. Well, the reason there were some question marks about the play at second, where the throw was handled by the second baseman, throw to the shortstop side. Travis going in and diving back. He thought he got his hand in. I think he's right. See if he got his hand in first. Oh, yeah, his hand, both hands, the right hand and his left, were in with a head first slide. And because Zobers had to reach back to his right and bring the ball back to the left, that allowed Travis to get in there safely. So, legitimate beef by Travis. Two and zero now to Gabe Kepler. Well, a great story. Gabe Kepler a couple of years ago was manager. Decided to come back and play last year with the Brewers. Signed a contract with the Rays following last year. And what a great story! It's always been a great condition he had an Achilles problem cost him some time but I thought it was interesting one of the things he was saying in his comeback that the only reason he would come back is if he could play defense not just to come back and hit he wanted to be able to play in the outfield which he is doing and has the last couple of games still a very good hitter very strong well conditioned he does a, a lot of conditioning and that has been his whole career, but he had the unfortunate Achilles problem. Says he probably will eventually, after he does retire officially, try managing. He loved it. But he was really good for the Brewers last year. 301 with eight home runs in 96 games. And of course, Brewers made the postseason. Yeah. Had some good years with the Red Sox before that, coming off the bench. Well, the one thing he said too, he said I was 33. If that's 38 or 39, I wouldn't even have dreamed of coming back to play. He stayed managing, but he was that young and able to come back. Jason Bartlett hits one very high to left center. Holiday reaches out, makes the catch. So Bartlett now one for two, and that's the second out here in the fifth. Number two, B.J. Upton. Well, Gabe Kapler. Talking about it, been around a long time. The Detroit Tigers were the team that he originally signed with. It was way back in 1995. 57th round. Mm -hmm. So for those youngsters that in high school, even in college, they just get drafted anywhere, just get into a system. Whoever, whatever team's minor league system, you never know. Yeah, as we mentioned, for Ke uh, Kevin Longoria, wasn't even drafted out of high school. That's right. So somebody missed the boat. But yeah, I, I think from a player standpoint and June draft coming up, and Eric Kubota, the A's director of scouting, has got his guys out throughout the country and all over the world looking at players. Draft will occur in June as Michael Wirtz starts to throw easily in the bullpen. But players, sure, it's nice to be the top draft choice, but Mike Piazza is a great story. Mm -hmm. in a last round, it's kind of a, maybe a courtesy, and he's going to the Hall of Fame. First ballot. Just get a chance to put on the uniform and then show what you can do. Driven to right, Buck racing back, warning track near the wall, and he's got it. B.J. Upton is retired, and so are the Rays in the top of the fifth. Bottom of the fifth coming up, A's four, Rays one.
A's in the bottom of the fifth inning. 4 1 Athletics over the Rays. Sweeney, Cabrera, and Giambi. Swing and a miss. It is really amazing. Friday night, cool and windy. Yesterday afternoon, sunny but cool, windy. And this afternoon, perfect day for baseball. Sweeney drives one to right. Kapler, and he's going to watch this one bounce off the wall. And Sweeney has a leadoff double. You know, too much top spin for Ryan Sweeney, who came close in Toronto hitting two. In right center, this one was up from Sonnenstein. He jumped all over it, but the top spin kept it in the park. Great sound. But off the wall, the out of town scoreboard, and after getting the ball back in, but a good lead off double. Cabrera takes a strike. Great shot to the hips opening up extension. Eyes on the ball. That ball is out of the strike zone. It's up, but he jumped on it and provided his own power as it was an off speed pitch from Sonnenstein. Orlando Cabrera, a strikeout and a single in the ball game. Curveball stays high, so the count even at one and one. Seven hits now for the Athletics, just three for the Rays so far. Right center, and that baby's going to get down for a base hit. Upton cuts it off. Sweeney races around third. He's going to come in to score. So Orlando Cabrera is that right center field swing and he knocks in a run. Boy, these young kids today able to see exactly what you're talking about. Runner at second base, want to get him over, stayed inside, hands inside. And great swing by Cabrera, trying just to move Sweeney to third base, but a little bit of a slice on the ball. Gets by or pass. Upton in center and gets the runner in. So a couple of hits to the right side by Cabrera today, and maybe today is the day that we get him going. Giambi first pitch swinging hits one very high and foul into the A's dugout. And you see the catcher Navarro, the only one with a chance at it. That's because. Longoria, the third baseman, is not only playing short, but even slid over towards second a little bit more than the normal shortstop spot. As Cormier starts to throw for the Rays. This will be pitch number 77 for Sonnenstein, and he has not been sharp this afternoon. Five to one, the A's lead. Giambi a ground out and a fly out. Both for two today. He rifles one base hit right field. Cabrera around second. He will go to third. Jason Giambi with a base hit. Three straight hits for the A's here in the fifth. And that was a two strike hit for Giambi and another line drive. He, in the elevation, he's got a second home run of the season. Fastball tailing Lundell away from him. Tried to get it inside. Sonnenstein was not able to. And leaked out enough for Jason just to hammer it to right field. And Cabrera seeing the ball in front of him. Able to get the third. Jim Hickey, the pitching coach, is coming out. Sonnenstein has given up three hits in this inning. Nine hits total in the game. Looked like Jim Hickey went out with a purpose. Yeah. A brisk walk. And he detected something Sonnenstein was doing. But 
Jim Hickett came from the Houston Astros, where he had a pretty good staff there before he joined Joe Madden's staff as a pitching coach. And has a very good staff here with the Rays. Maybe one of the best, if not the best, in American League East. Sonnenstein won 13 games last year, but struggled down the stretch. Little flare, center field, Upton can't get it. Base hit, Cabrera scores, and it's six to one. Upton tried to deep Cabrera, but Cabrera didn't fall for it. So Matt Holiday with his 11th RBI. Well, it's good to see Upton throw up his glove because that meant he was not going to get to the ball trying to deep the runner, Jason Giambi. Put up his glove there and then try to hurry to get to the ball. Good base running by Giambi to get in a second. So the afternoon is done for Andy Sonnenstein. He goes four plus innings and he gives up six runs. And both the runners he is responsible for. So pitching change in Oakland, 6 1 A's. On for the A's, nobody out here in the fifth inning. Six to one. A's leading the race. Pitching change as Tampa Bay brings in Lance Cormier takes over. Eighth appearance. He pitched on Friday night. He pitched the ninth inning of that Rays win over the Athletics. So second appearance in the series for Cormier. First batter he faces will be Jack Cust. So the A's with a six to one lead and they have a chance to really break it open and get a couple more here in the fifth. Not a good afternoon for Sonnenstein. I think just as much to be had to the A's very good approach today by the athletics. Interesting uh, note today the three times the A's have had a runner at third. And less than two outs, and all three times, they hit at the plate. It's one of the first pitch and throw them in. So the out is at first base, and the shift was on, so it was kind of an odd situation. There was nobody at second base to take the throw, and so the throw wasn't made, and the out was recorded at first. You don't see that very often. Well, there's a chance to see exactly what we're talking about because there was a runner at second base. Longoria had to play close to third base. Otherwise, yeah, we've been able to walk to third. Garcia Parra going to be intentionally walked to face Kurt Suzuki with the bases loaded and one out. And we're talking about the Rangers. The A's will be playing them starting Tuesday. And Joe Madden 
became part of history. The manager of the Rays when he think, had a seven to three lead and intentionally walked. Was it Hamilton? Josh Hamilton with the bases loaded intentionally walked him with the bases loaded bring in a run. Make it seven to four and then got the next guy. I think that was the first American League manager since in like 1901. To do that. <laughs> but it worked for him and everything worked for Joe last year and. He was awarded the American League manager of the year and rightfully so with his great year of managing these rates. Josh Hamilton left the game yesterday. With a rib cage injury or something like that and he was not in the Rangers lineup today. I only bring that up because that is the ace next opponent the Texas Rangers starting Tuesday. In the year Josh Hamilton had last year that was not a bad move for Joe Madden to intentionally walk and had a chance to swing one swing of the bat to tie the game. And meanwhile an intentional walk to load the bases means the pitcher has to throw a strike to the next batter and so far two pitches to Suzuki. Have not been in the strike zone. And now 3 0 to Suzuki. Kurt's been one of the A's hottest hitters. He's one for two this afternoon. He's got nine hits in his last 17 at bats, but right here, he'll just be taking one. And there's a the strike. Bases are loaded for the A's. Giambi, Holiday, and Garcia Parra are the runners. And it's low ball four. Cormier walks in a run. It's seven to one. Uh, Joe Madden's strategy. From his standpoint, good. Garcia Parra, veteran hitter, is already driven in a run. And so he walks him intentionally, set up a force at all bases, but this pitcher cannot throw but one strike of the five pitches he threw to Suzuki. Well, Travis Buck, chance to knock in a couple of runs. You know, as dirty as Travis Buck is, his uniform, I mean, he deserves to hit one of the gap. <laughs> I mean, Cliff Clavin is going to have his work cut out for him. Yes. And that uniform sparkling white when the A's return after this next road trip. We know Cliffy can do it. But you know you've had a good game for uniforms. Yeah. Right? Plus, it just looks better, doesn't yeah. it? Popped up. Bartlett. Glasses down. He's got it. And that's the second out. Now batting. Second base three. So the ninth man to hit in this Mark inning Ellis. is Mark Ellis. Three runs in after the A's scored four times in the second. So seven to one. Slowly hit towards second. Zobris takes care of it. Side retired, but a good inning for the A's. They get four hits and they score three times. So sixth inning coming up, seven one A's.
Subway Eat Fresh Ask Glenn and Ray question. It comes from Jeff, who lives in Livermore. Can Seiko, McGuire, and Weiss all won Rookie of the Year awards back to back to back? Has any team ever won four in a row? Yes, they have. I think they have. The Los Angeles Dodgers. Not that long ago, right? Conseco 86, McGuire 87, Weiss 88. Eric Carroll's, Mike Piazza. Needs some help. Let's see. Uh, who was the outfielder? Went to Toronto. Raul Mondesi. I think you see, you're right. Um, Sure, we're going to get some help. But, uh, that's three. Oh, I know who it was. Left-handed hitter. Went to the American League. Todd Hollinsworth. I think he's yeah. the other one. Exactly. Hollinsworth. Pretty good player, but didn't quite have the career of the other gentleman. Two and two to Carl Crawford. Curve and he fights it off. He's able to follow it back to the screen. Months, I guess. Name out of the past. It's hard to figure out why he didn't have an even better career. Boy, he was with the Dodgers. He was special. Sweeney comes in, but he's going to play it on a hop. Carl Crawford oh. is two for three, but we're told. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Lopes say. Number three. Back in the Kevin 70s, the, uh, the Dodgers. So the Dodgers did it twice. What was it then? Sucked how? Sacks. Sacks. Yeah. Sacks. Yeah. Kurt Young jogging out as he did yesterday. Figure Kurt Young, the pitching coach, will talk to Dana Evelyn. As Michael Wirtz gets loose in the bullpen, but yesterday, after Dallas Braden pitched the fifth inning, and the sixth inning went out, and Dallas had kind of tweaked his groin, and Kirk jogged out. Next thing you know, he points the bullpen, made a pitching change. So he went out to talk to him and talk to Dallas after the game about more or less the question, and Kirk wanted an answer. How do you feel? And one of the most important things for a pitcher. Or anybody playing the game, to be honest with your manager or pitching coach. Dallas Braden said, probably need some help. He called the bullpen, and the A's got out of it. Andrew Bailey came in, but you know, it's just, it's so hard sometimes. That, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. And the worst thing can happen, pitcher changes his delivery because of an injury and messes up everything. Or even in the case of a, a, a a groin injury, yeah. you could throw one more pitch and, yeah, yeah. and make it much more severe. Yeah. Well, one of the things too, you, you, you compensate for a lower part of your body injury and it affects your arm because mm -hmm. you change the angle of your way you're throwing. And so it's just better to be honest. And if you can't do it, somebody will come in and get the job done. His bullpen has been very good this year, so that makes a difference as well. has been outstanding for the athletics. And I think Dana Edlin would love to be able to walk back in the dugout at the end of this inning and give the A's six solid innings, which has pitched very well today. It's blocked by Kurt Suzuki, keeps Crawford at first. Great job, Kurt Suzuki has just gotten better and better blocking balls in the dirt. Hard slider moved properly, very correctly to his left near the break. You know the slider is going to move that way and just moved his body in front, was able to block it. Two and two now to Longoria. Longoria is 0 for 2. Got a big at bat in the third inning, came up with runners at first and third and one out. Evelyn got him to ground and do a 4 6 3 double play to end the inning. So now full count with Crawford at first.
Pat Burrell in the on deck circle. So the big hitters up for the Rays. And Michael Ware is probably, depending on what happens with Longoria, getting ready for Pat Burrell. This will be pitch number 90 by Dana Eagle. And it's rolled foul. Got a little piece of the foot of the Longoria. This is the final game that the A's and the Rays will play here in Oakland. The A's will play seven games in Tampa, a three game series and a four game series. The four game series is next month, May 18th through the 21st. And that's a breaking pitch on 3 2, and it's high for a walk. Third walk issued. And Bob Guerin is coming out. So Dana Evelyn goes five plus innings. And he leaves with a seven to one lead. So at 91 pitches, Evelyn will sit down and hope his bullpen can keep this a seven to one game. Michael Works coming in. So Evelyn, it's a nice round of applause, and we'll be back. Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Carl's Jr. Try one of Carl's Jr.'s six dollar burgers. It's made with 100% black Angus. Beautiful day in the Bay Area. A little cool, but summer is right around the corner. Dana Evelyn. Five innings, four hits. Runners out there, both belong to him. Crawford at second, Longoria at first. So for the Rays, they're thinking, well, here's the chance for us to get back in the game. The A's open has been very good. Uh, Words faced Pat Burrell on Friday night, threw a perfect 3 2 slider that was called a ball. Okay, clearly, strike three. It's Tim Timmons, who is taking the rest of the series off. Finn, he's going to come out in the cold weather on Friday night. No long sleeves, no jacket. It'll take the two days. That's just the rotation, the way the umpires have their time off. Cabrera to Ellis, double play. Just a nice, easy ground ball and no problem as the A's turn it. And just like that, there are two outs. Not a great slider. And Pat Burrell off the end of the bat and 6 4 3. There's your Taylor made double play. So, first and second, nobody out now, runner at third, two outs. And that's what we've talked about. Let the defense do the work. And that was a great example of how great they are, how quickly you can get two outs. So, Willie Ibar will hit. Ibar, a switch hitter, swings around to hit from the left side of the plate. The 
Good swing that time by Ibar. 2 0 pitch. Two and two. Ibar last year had 10 home runs for the Rays. He did that in 95 games. You have a chance to play quite a bit, especially when Longoria, remember Longoria missed some time late in the season. They played Ibar regularly and he did a decent job. Garcia Parra shades down. He's got it in foul territory and Michael Ward's a terrific job. And the Rays do not score. Bottom of the six coming up 7 1 Athletics. Seven to one A's lead in the bottom of the sixth inning over the Rays. And these will have the top of their order. And Sweeney steps in. Ten hits in the game for the Athletics. Four of them came in the second. When they scored four runs. Four of the hits came in the fifth when they scored three runs. Sweeney on the infield. It's Ben Zobrist, the second baseman, has it. So one out here in the sixth, and Orlando Cabrera will step up. Shortstop, number 18. Good ball game Orlando for Cabrera, Cabrera tonight. Cabrera. It's good to see. Single in the third, and then a single again in the fifth, both to right field. But there's no doubt all players like warm weather. Orlando Cabrera talked about it. Uh, he feels the month of April has not ever been a very good month for him. We're playing in some cold climates. Just kind of get that thought in your mind that you're not going to play that well in April and kind of holds true to form, but he is coming out of it. Weather's starting to warm up, and one thing for sure, he's going to play. Cabrera's RBI in the fifth was his fourth of the season. Curve bounced to short. And that's the second out here in the sixth inning. So Cabrera now two for four. Now batting first baseman. Number 16. Angels 6 nothing over the Mariners at game now in the eighth inning. All the other games in the American League are 
final. We mentioned the Rangers score. Toronto Blue Jays continue to play good baseball. They beat the White Sox four to three this afternoon. Roy Halladay got the win, going seven innings. So he's four and one, and the Blue Jays are now fourteen and six. You're going to win a series. Give the ball to Doc Holliday. Jason Giambi is retired, and a quick inning for Lance Cormier. So seventh inning coming up, still seven one eights. Moments. The Rays took the lead in this game in the second inning. Yanavarro with the squeeze button, one nothing. But then the A's came up big in the second. Kurt Suzuki a two-run double. That was part of a four-run inning. And then in the fifth inning, the A's scored three times. Orlando Cabrera knocked in a run. So did Matt Holliday. So did Kurt Suzuki. Danny Evelyn made a big pitch when he needed it. That was in the third inning. It's out of the double play. So. Danny Evelyn goes five plus innings. He's in line for the win if the A's can hold on. 7 1 is your score. The Rays come to bat here in the top of the seventh. Ben Zobris, Deanna Navarro, Gabe Kapler. Three scheduled hitters. When Michael Wirtz did a nice job in the sixth, he came in with two on and nobody out. He got a double play off Pat Burrell and then. Willie Ibar was retired. Garcia Parra is out. Jack Hanahan is now in at third base. So Hanahan will hit in that sixth spot. And Dana Evelyn did a good job getting eight ground ball outs. And then, of course, Wirtz in the sixth inning. He had a big double play. So 10 outs recorded by the A's. The Rays on the ground. But Michael Wirtz with that. Hard slider that he throws. As quickly as it goes down, as hard as he throws, it's hard for a hitter to get under the ball and put it in the air. Looked like he went yeah. around, and he did. And that's the turbo slider that goes down like a split finger fastball. Fastball is up and away. Well, the pitching matchups for that A's Rangers series starting Tuesday. It'll be Brett Anderson and Kevin Millwood in game one on Tuesday. Hanahan just in the game. He'll get action, and that's a nice play by Jack Hanahan. Wow. Bare hand. Wow. Got quite a bit on the throw. Never fails. Come in defensively. Ball off the end of the bat. Q shot. Zobris runs well, but Jack Hanahan, we saw it all last year, last couple of years. Off balance throw. Great stretch by Giambi and gets the fast Zobris. Great play 
a very difficult play, but made perfectly by Jack Hanahan. Disappointed that he did not start the season with the A's, went back to AAA after playing two years with the A's after being acquired from the Tigers. Buck went back. Now he's got to come in. He goes into a slide and he makes the catch. Two outs. Travis broke back and then he hesitated just for a moment and then he came racing in and he made the catch. Well, that's where speed. We're talking about Carl Crawford and Upton and but to go back as much as Buck did, maybe trying to determine how hard the ball was hit or not hit by Navarro. But with the speed able to make up for the mistake and make the catch, even though he had to go to slide. So two quick outs and Gabe Kapler. Bunts at it and misses. But I thought what Jack Hanahan said. You know, you, you get the big leagues get spoiled a little bit, and obviously the place to play. So disappointed as he was when he went to Triple A, could not wait to get back to big leagues. So his first at bat, second pitch, hits a home run, and makes a great defensive play here. Nice hitting by Michael Wirtz. Three up, three down, with some help from the defense. Bottom of the seventh coming up. Seven. -1. Ballpark and the scoreboard is good. A's seven and the Rays one. Little League Day, lots of youngsters at the ballpark. Sunday afternoon. So it's the bottom of the seventh inning. Holiday Cust and Hanahan, the three scheduled hitters for the Athletics. Lance Cormier came in in the fifth inning, got out of the jam, but not before. He's had scored three times and he had a three up, three down sixth inning. So he's given Ruben some innings out of the bullpen. Andy Sonnenstein, the starter, went just four innings and gave up all seven runs and ten hits. Matt Holiday is one for two at an RBI single in the fifth and he walked and scored in the second. So he's been right in the middle of the. Two big innings the A's have had the second and the fifth. He's got a slider two and oh and that's. Sometimes the difference of league to league I mean, two in the National League get a fastball and drive it someplace but. Just. Uh, always has been kind of different in the American League where you get. Off speed pitches and fastball hitters counts. And with so many interleague games and pitchers going from league to league, that's not as much true anymore. Bounce behind second. Zobrist was playing that way, and Matt Holiday is retired for the first out. 
So Holiday now one for three, and that'll bring up Jack Cust. Jack Cust. Cust has been on base a couple times today. He scored a run. He also grounded out to second. So it's Anderson and Millwood in the first game of that series in Texas. Game two on Wednesday, Trevor Cahill and Vincente Padilla. And then on Thursday, the day game, it'll be Dallas Braden and Scott Feldman. And then it'll be on to Seattle for the weekend series against the Mariners. Dana Evelyn and then TBA. That's the open spot, right? It's the open fifth spot in the rotation. It's a matter of whether Josh Houghton goes back in that spot. He's do have the options, but we'll see what happens. Cuss gets jammed and hits a shallow fly to right center. And Kapler takes care of it for the second out. Third base. So Jack Hanahan will hit for the first time. Well, he was in the game. Nomar Garcia Parra had an RBI hit in the second, and he also walked. So Nomar is out, and Hanahan in in his spot. I like those RBI machines. Guys that are very familiar have been in RBI position and driving them in, as Garcia Parra has yesterday, three and one today. So a quick meeting is over. Tomorrow, what I tell him, said you got the rest of the game. By the way, you know that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> off day tomorrow for Joe Madden and his Rays. Or actually, the A's are off. The Rays go to Minneapolis. But seven one down, he's coming out of the bullpen. Unless the offense comes around, he's probably in there for the duration. Bartlett has it, and Ann's retired, and. It's eight in a row, retired by Lance and Cormier. Eighth inning coming up, still 7-1-8.
And that's Tuesday, May the 5th. The A's will host the Angels from Anaheim. First pitch is at 7.05, and the first 10,000 fans will receive an A's fleece blanket. And it's brought to you by, guess who, Comcast. Absolutely. For tickets, visit the Collison box office or order online at oaklandathletics.com. I think we could have had the fleece blanket opening night. It's been used quite a bit so far. But uh, we'll look forward to getting it on May the 5th. I know Brady will make sure he has one up here. And Marty probably is. Store them in case we need them. (laughs) Yeah, we shouldn't complain too much. If you're a cameraman, you got to stand around. And if you're outside, it's probably even worse. Jason Bartlett leading it off against... Santiago Casilla comes in out of the A's bullpen here in the eighth inning. Michael Wirtz, two very good innings. Help from the defense, did Wirtz. Continues to have a strong start to the season. One and two now to Bartlett, who's one for two. The Rays have just four hits in the game. Casilla. The ball that's spinning around a little bit, but he makes the play. So Bartlett is retired. How good was Michael Wirtz? How about coming in and throwing a total of 16 pitches to get Number two, six outs? <laughs> Outstanding. Double play, pop up by Ibar, and then ground out, fly ball to right, ground ball to short. Eight pitches in the sixth, eight pitches in the seventh. Take the rest of the day off, get ready to go to Texas, but uh, just another great job. Michael Wirtz coming out of the ace pit. Now, if you were a starting pitcher and you use that ratio, you'd be all right. Yeah, yeah you'd be pitching in the distance. <laughs> Wouldn't need him both in the old 14 innings. That's I got it. it. Yeah. So Casilla matching five Crawford. pitches, two outs. Casilla's had a little rest of late, so he comes in throwing hard. But just some uh, outstanding arms in the ace bullpen. And so far, Kurt Young and Bob Guerin doing a very good job mixing and matching, making sure everybody's getting it work. And that's always important. And it has not been easy because the starters have not always pitched deep into games. And then it, the mixing and matching, you have to throw in the which guy is available today into the equation, and that makes it even more difficult. Swing and a miss by. Carl Crawford. And you know the A's in the last two games. Starters there, but what Dan Geist did Friday night. Perhaps very instrumental in the A's. Saving the bullpen for yesterday and today. Yeah. To be able to uh, win yesterday and hopefully hang on to win today. Three up through down inning for Casilla, bottom of the eighth. Coming up, 7-1 Athletics. California is brought to you by Cash Creek. Cash Creek's showers of cash is giving away $500 every 20 minutes. Visit CashCreek.com for details. 
Seven to one, the A's with the lead here in the top of the eighth inning. He's trying to pick up their seventh win of the year. For the Rays, they bring out a new pitcher, Dan Wheeler. So Wheeler takes over in the eighth. Lance Carmier goes three innings out of the bullpen. No hits, no runs, with just a couple of walks. And now it's Wheeler. Off to a tough start. And this is a pretty good reliever, Dan Wheeler. A real workhorse. Wheeler takes over. First pitch to Kurt Suzuki is a bit outside. Well, Ray, if there's one question mark with the Rays, they have a good offense, very good starting pitching. It may be the very, very back end of the bullpen. Now, they have good arms with Wheeler and Grant Ball for it. Troy Percival is their closer and it's a guy who's got a lot of saves, but I don't know if they're sure that he can do it night in and night out for six months. And that's nothing against Troy Percival, but it's just you know, the reality of it. But they have what they think may be a little bit of a secret weapon down in the minor leagues, Jason Isringhausen, who is getting close to pitching in the big leagues again. He's pitching in the minor leagues for the Rays, just getting himself ready. And he will be with the big league team soon, from what I understand. Yeah, Balfour got a chance to close it a little bit last year, as did Wheeler. And when Percival was on the disabled list, yeah, Percival coming over to the Rays, more or less said he's here to try to help the future of the Rays in the closing department. But a great leader down in the Rays bullpen. Troy Percival, an outstanding pitcher for many years, mostly with the Angels. Lead off walk to Kurt Suzuki. Right fielder, number six, Travis Buck. So Travis Buck will step in. Buck was two for three yesterday, the home run. He's one for three today. And we mentioned the starters in Texas. It'll be Millwood, Padilla, Feldman, all three right handers. So there's a good chance Travis Buck will be out there. A couple of the games for sure. Maybe even all three. We'll see. Behind third. And it's the third baseman, Longoria, who makes the catch. So Buck now one for four. Second baseman. Number 14, Mark Ellis. Mark Ellis will hit for the fourth time. Mark picked up his ninth RBI of the year in the second inning. It's a final now. The Angels 8-0 over Seattle. That breaks the Mariners' little three game winning streak. And the Angels salvage a game in that series. Well, Seattle with the loss now 12 and 7. That one's popped, and that is just below us. Well, it is very early, but we can see his next week against Seattle with them being in first place and going head to head. Of course, uh, you can't look at the scoreboard because you're facing the team in first place. And yes, it is early, but they want to get too far down. Bartlett grabs the line drive. But it'd be interesting to see the how the crowd is. In Seattle. When the Mariners were good five, six, seven years ago, their crowd was awesome. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, they've gone through some tough times the last few years. We'll see if that enthusiasm is back in the crowd in Seattle, even though it is very, very early.
Well, they do have Junior, King Griffey yep. Junior, back with the ball club, so that's going to bring some people out. The Angels, on the other hand, they'll head out on the road. They go to Baltimore and New York for a six game trip. I take that back. It's Baltimore, New York, and then the short two game series here in Oakland. So it's an eight game trip for the Angels. Suzuki not being held over at first. Ryan Sweeney is one for four. Sweeney doubled and scored. That was in the fifth inning. His fourth double of the year. Received five walks this afternoon to go along with their 10 hits. So they've had lots of base runners, especially in the first five innings. Again, foul back by Sweeney. Zobrist flips to second, and that will do it. A's get a leadoff walk, but do nothing with it. So we're headed to the ninth. Hit the road, and it'll be the first regular season look at the hard hitting Texas Rangers. Coverage begins at 4 30 with A's pregame live, and then the ball game at 5. It's the A's and the Rangers from Arlington. It's all right here in the new home for Athletics Baseball, Comcast Sportsnet, California. It's where the A's are. It'll be Brett Anderson and Kevin Millwood, a rookie and a veteran, matching up in the first game of that three game series. So, again, Tuesday, our coverage begins at 4.30. Would you like to head to Texas tomorrow with a win today as they lead 7-1 over the Rays. Three outs away from getting that win. Russ Springer, first pitch to Longoria is a strike. And the veteran right-hander, 
tenth appearance for Russ Springer. Came yesterday. Holiday takes care of that one. Well, we could say that Springer's been a workhorse, but all the guys down the bullpen have yeah. pitched quite a few innings, and they've all done a terrific job. Number five, Pat Burrell. So Springer gets the first out here in the ninth, and that'll bring up Pat Burrell. Good. That's why, again, very important for Kurt Young, especially handling the pitchers as the actual pitching coach, to be able to. Monitor the workload on the relievers. Keep them sharp. Done a very good job. And works Casilla. Now Springer today. He had not allowed anything. Suzuki takes the foul ball. Just another day at work for a catcher. See how it just missed the glove. Catcher Smith and just under the neck. Chest protector that helps not one bit. It's there for sure. <laughs> Maybe it'll help you if you block a ball in the dirt, but take one right off the chest or the chest protector. Brutal. Steve Sales and Walt Horn are always busy with bags of ice, especially for catcher. Well, it's amazing you <laughs> go in a major league clubhouse, and that's the way it is. But guys have two, three, four bags of ice wrapped around their legs, knees, elbows, shoulders, back, and anything that's ailing. Owen oh, two to Pat Murrow, who was one for nine in this series, and make it one for ten as he swings and misses at a high fastball. Two outs here in the ninth. There's that easy delivery by Springer Ray that you talk about, and then it's 90, 92. Number 16. Uh, it just explodes Three. out of his hand, and from the hitter standpoint, you kind of gauge what the pitcher how he's delivering the ball. Of course, Will Springer's been around for a long time. Hitters have seen it, but still doesn't help. Ball gets on you so quickly, and Pat Burrow, very good hitter, swinging a miss the high fastball. So Willie Ibar is the last hope for the Rays. A single this afternoon for Ibar. That was in the second. He's also grounded out, and he fouled out to third. Strike call, and it's one and one. One out away from a series win against the defending American League champion Rays. And it's pretty simple over the course of a season. If you win series, you're going to be just fine. Win series or avoid long losing streaks. And if you have a stopper or two in the rotation, you can avoid that even better. Have a strong bullpen. Today, 18,689. They rise to their feet here in the ninth. Springer, the 2 2 to Ibar. Ibar hangs in there, fouls it back into the second deck. Strikes out Burl and Ibar to finish it in a very well played game this afternoon by the Oakland Athletics. One of those good pitching, good hitting, and plenty of defense. And when it's all said and done,